आशा की बेटी आ जाएगी मैं इसको खुश करती हूँ ये लोग आ जाओ एडमिट करना पड़ रहा है हेलो हाय हाय अमन संदीप आई पुट माय वीडियो ऑन आपका इनर व्हील दिख रहा है संदीप हाँ हट गया ओके तो मेरे वीडियो पे आपको क्या दिख रहा है आपका तो पीछे शी स्पीक्स का पोस्टर और वो दूसरा दिख रहा है thanks to parantha a little uh, left of your so that fully visible left ho jao okay yeah, it's visible is it better yeah, yeah. okay mere pe sunlight bahut aayi hai acha that's good in fact hmm abhi theek hai Can you pass me a pillow, Paranta? Please. Thank you so much. Any, any, any? No, no, no. Those, those, those. Not a bolster. Thank you, dear. Thanks. And a water bottle near us on this table. Ah, oh, that's fine. I can pick it up. So you're ready to run the video from there at three fifty-five. आपके पास कितने कंफर्मेशन हैं संदीप टू अटेंड आई गॉट नन नो कंफर्मेशन मतलब कैसे आई हैव नो कंफर्मेशन टू अटेंड अच्छा तो आपने अपने ग्रुप्स में सब जगह इनवाइट कर दिया था ना सब जगह सब जगह आज आज वाला ना कि कल वाला आज वाला भी मैंने अभी कल वाला कहीं नहीं किया आपकी वॉल्यूम कम आ रही है मुझे इज इट ऑडिबल या इट इज मेरी अलमारियों के हैंडल दिख रहे हैं आई हैव टू गो बिट लेफ्ट यू हैव टू गो बिट लेफ्ट वाला एक्चुअली Now it's okay. This is better. Instead of me going left to right, I should do my left to right. Yeah, it's fine. थोड़े तो दिखेंगे. I can't be here, I think. See, I change my face. Yeah, good. थोड़ा तो दिखेगा. टेस्ट वीडियो ना तो फिर थोड़ा सिग्नल इशू हो जाता है यहाँ पे सिग्नल इशू नहीं है तो मेरे वो फोन कर बेटा कैन यू पास मी फोन दी थोड़ा कम कर दी है
शेडो बर्तन कर भी बंद ही नहीं हो रही है और डार्क आ रहा है कहाँ जाऊँ मैं भी कल मीटिंग नहीं से मिली थी हाँ मम्मी ने पहले जॉइन कर लिया सारों से चलती नहीं बेटा बोल रहा है हाँ इसलिए जल्दी बोल हेलो 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 कैन यू हेयर मी यू कैन यू हेयर मी यस वेरी वेल या सो यू नो व्हाट आई हैव डन इज वी हैव वी आर मेक मेकिंग एवरीबॉडी वेट इन द वेटिंग रूम या ओनली द स्पीकर्स वी हैव अलाउड करेक्ट इट सीम्स टू मी यू डोंट नो द स्पीकर्स टुडे Otherwise, this confusion won't happen. Please keep a drink sheet in your hand. Get it. I can't have the headset set up. I don't know what's the problem. Yeah. Hello, Manpreet. This is Sandeep Bhargav. Hi Aman. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I can see you. Yeah. हाँ जी. मैं मुझे ना अपना audio check करना. अच्छा करिए please. आप आप तो आप तो audio check कर सकते हो. आपको तो हमने on किया हुआ audio. Your your audio is not getting connected actually as. Uh, your audio is not connected. So what you can do is either you can connect the audio from the phone or from the internet your own device which you are using to log in. मैं फिर से ट्राई करती हूँ। हाँ जी हाँ जी। लॉशेड आई कैन्ट हेल्प। सनसेट का आई डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू। मैडम योर ऑडियो इज स्टिल गेटिंग कनेक्टेड इट इज नॉट कनेक्टेड येट 
there is some problem with your audio is it am no. i not audible madam yeah uh acha you talking to aman yeah still it, now it is connected yeah yeah it is connected can you hear us madam madam aman preet can you hear us no still there is a problem can you hear us no need to kindly check uh hi aman can you hear us aman am i audible to you check kare she is not there उनको ट्रांसिट ना तो उनको थोड़ा सा था मतलब कुछ ना कुछ मैसेज करते रहो उनको चैट में जो लोग आए हैं वो नहीं तो चले जाएंगे उनको कुछ ना कुछ मैसेज करो वेलकम हाय हाय हिंदी हाय ये कुछ भी करते रहो अमन आर बी ऑडिबल टू यू हाय अमन आर यू बीइंग एबल टू कनेक्ट Can you hear us? कर देना और करन तो वीडियो चला देना। Madam, can you take it from your phone? Phone will be better if you are on a PC. You need to you tell her take it up from the phone अगर ये problem कर रहा है।
Aman, is your audio proper? Can you check once? I can't hear you. Hello, everybody. This is Sandeep Bhargav. Yes, Sandeep, I just want to check whether you can hear me. Yes, a little feeble, but you can raise your voice a bit. Hello, Dr. Sangeeta. Yeah, hello. This is Sandeep. Yes, Bhargav. yes. Yeah, Sangeeta here. So yeah. we are all audible, I think, to each other. Yeah, hi, Sangeeta. Hi, hi, Vinita. Yes. Hi, Aman. Are we, oh. Aman, we can't hear you. And uh, hi, Gaurav. Yeah, not audible. Yeah. Gaurav, are you? Am I audible to you? Uh, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Vinita, you are audible. Yeah. Undi. Uh, Vinita, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Gaurav, I can hear you. Only okay. Aman, I, I think I'll have to take you, uh, you know, Wait, towards the you? end because your audio is not working, I think. I got it. Your audio is very low. If you can increase the volume a bit, this is Sandeep. So I'm I'm on uh, maximum volume here. Yeah, your voice is low actually. Uh, I think it must be because of I'm using some kind of uh, pods. Uh, uh, I can't do better than this, unfortunately. Just try it without the pods. Uh, is this better? It's same. Could you just try without the pods? Sandeep ji, abhi aari hai volume? Yeah, yeah, Amanpreet, your voice is clear now. Perfect. Clear, okay. I'll not use any device, okay. Dr. Sangeeta, you go a little slightly back because your uh, head is cut the picture. Yeah, that's better. Perfect. Yeah. I think this is better. This lighting is better. Yeah. Yeah? I think we can go. We can't see you, Vinita. Can't see you. Uh, sorry. No. Yeah, that's better. Yeah? Yeah. Do I need more light or is it okay? Perfect. Perfect. All right. Ma'am, uh, I think I might be loud and clear now. Absolutely. Perfect. Everybody perfect. Good to go. Uh, what, what about now, Sandeep? How is it now? Uh, Gaurav, it is there, but it's still low, actually. If it doesn't work, just leave it. No problem. Is this better or the previous one was better? Uh, it is still lower, Gaurav. Slightly better than the previous, but still lower. Sandeep ji, Gaurav, uh, sir, is actually very clear to me. So I think I'll be end because he's very clear to me. Clear, Gaurav and Aman okay. and Sandeep all are fine at my end. Okay, Gaurav ji, fine. So then we are good to go. Yeah. Namaste Su Swagatam. Aaj World Mental Health Day pe char eminent speakers ke saath aap sabhi ka bohat bohat swagat. And jab tak hamare baaki guests check in kar rahe hain, ek chote se video ke saath mein aap sabka swagat karti hoon. Ye jab tak sabhi guests hamare login karte hain, do ya teen minute ke liye hum is video ko dekhte hain. I was looking at starting a platform for empowering women where they could freely discuss issues that distress them without feeling pressure to stay silent, which is an unfortunate predicament in our society. We decided on a case study discussion group approach and gave a tagline, every woman has a story, which became immensely popular. 
some of the most illustrious women have shared their stories of success, inspiration, and challenges from our platform. But on the way, I realized most women develop cold feet just before discussing a sensitive issue on a public platform. And it's very important to respect their feelings and maintain their anonymity and confidentiality. So emerged the current format by edition three, how to make ecosystem friendlier towards women, which is a more topical and academic approach. We deeply research issues related to women and plan a discussion around it. We typically invite a senior civil servant, academician, journalist, activist, judiciary, and celebrity artist. It's important to engage youth and every possible section of society in this discussion. We have been fortunate that some of the top voices of from EU ambassador to senior activists, renowned journalists, renowned academicians, serving secretaries and serving judges and jurists have graced this platform because we stay objective in our only goal, service to humanity. Please visit www.shieldspeaks.co.in. I'm thankful to media. Each of She Speaks editions have generated tremendous print, online, and electronic media interest and coverage. Some of the topics that we have covered so far, harassment of women in the workplace, tagging and typecasting of women. For this particular edition, as part of our research and survey, we video collected voices of women across the continents, as well as from Hollywood to Bollywood. Another extremely insightful discussion was sex trafficking of women and girls in the subcontinent the impact of culture on gender discrimination, the role of technology in creating safe spaces for women, role of men in women empowerment, gender awakening and leadership initiatives, women envisioning five trillion economy and so on. I wonder how spaced out we feel about issues when at this point in time, we are all dealing with the most unprecedented, shall I say, crisis or rather a situation of modern world history, 21st century, which no individual or government has ever anticipated or envisaged. All over India, millions of migrant workers were reportedly fleeing its shuttered cities and trekking home to their villages during May, June 2020. AMRA responded to the crisis in its best capacity when migration was at its peak. We did our bit by distributing sanitary napkins, toiletries, sanitization products for women in 30 ml handy bottles, which could easily be carried even if women were to cover long distances on foot. The pandemic has wreaked havoc into the lives of people in multiple ways. It has not only affected bodies, but also scarred minds. Its physical and psychosocial health effects require prompt attention and care of the persons and families getting impacted, more so in the case of more vulnerable sections of society, girls and women. We are all familiar with the reports of a phenomenal rise in mental distress and domestic violence. It has been reported that this unusual spurt is only the tip of the iceberg as 86% women who experienced violence never sought help and 77% of victims did not even mention the incident to anyone. An increase in depression, suicide, and cybercrime against women are being reported from all across the world. As a response to the crisis, we, the Amra Foundation's flagship project and platform, She Speaks, are initiating a helpline and a national campaign, Lend an Ear and Extend a Hand. Besides offering mental and emotional support, the Amra Foundation's helpline will also act as a medium of information dissemination for adults and girls and women. The helpline shall also focus on case studies of domestic violence victims and COVID survivors for future learnings and preparedness. With our resources, we can only do as much. We have taken this giant step without a CSR partner or any aid or grant from anywhere. This pilot helpline project will initially be launched in Delhi and NCR for adults and girls and women in distress from Monday to Saturday for six hours for a period of one to two years. We seek support to run the pilot project. 
We are looking for partners in the government and non-government organizations. We need to create a pool of experienced counselors, psychologists, mental health professionals, and legal experts. We require financial assistance for intervention centers and coordination with government bodies for successful execution. We appeal to you all to associate with this humanitarian cause for the general good of women and Ma Bharati. I once again welcome our esteemed guests and you all on this very important occasion launch of She Speaks Sashakta Helpline. Dhanyavad. Namaste, Suswagatam. I welcome you all and I'm very thankful to all the eminent panelists and to you all for being part of this occasion today. Jo beat gai, so baat gai. Jeevan me ek sitara tha, mana hai dohat pyara tha. Phir dhup gaya to dhup gaya. Ambar ke anand ko dekho, kitne isne tare tute, kitne isme pyare chute. जो छूट गए फिर कहाँ मिले पर बोलो टूटे तारों पर कब अंबर शोक मनाता है जो भी गई तो बात गई आज की ये बात मैं हरिवंश राय बच्चन की इन पंक्तियों के साथ शुरू करना चाहूँगी but can we say this for pandemic I know Homo sapiens are an extremely resilient species but yet isolation fear and anxiety about the future has created a catastrophic pandemic of mental health issues, all categories of people, for all categories of people. The most neglected being females. Their issues have been ignored, stigmatized and pushed in the shadows forever. As it is, women face a number of traumas in their lives. Traumas of male dominance or patriarchy, Traumas caused by vulgarity, abuse, exploitation, hedonism, control, physical, emotional, financial, so on and so forth. A female yet is the pivotal point or fulcrum of a household. She's a mother, teacher, mentor, friend, and guide. If females do not contribute or manage, kya hoga is desh ka, dunya ka, or samaj ka? What is pandemic doing to them? Look at the reports coming from different parts of the world. Your and my part of the world, India, your city, neighborhood, family, friends. Stress will come and go, but traumas last forever. In this sense, there is no post-COVID era, my friend. Child abuse, domestic violence, child neglect, broken families leave people with deep lasting trauma. 99% people live, cope with it even without being aware of it and fail to bloom to their complete potential. We need to invest in the mental health of adults and girls and women. Can this world be a happy planet without, with unhealthy female population? For this planet to be healthy and happy, we need healthy females, healthy girl child. Traumas are deep and can bring change in neurological behavior. Pandemic will aggravate the inner demons. We may reach a point of no return if we are not careful enough. We have to control PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. If we have to remain a society with values, we must care more for our teachers and mothers. They are our first gurus and counselors. We have to acknowledge their contribution. On this Mental Health Day, we resolve to work in this direction and will soon come out with mental health care and wellness guidelines. 
After this crisis, we already have launched a campaign, lend an ear and extend a hand on 15th August 2020 and a toll free, she speaks, Sashakta Counseling Helpline. This helpline offers counseling and emotional support to adolescent girls and women facing mental distress. It also provides empathetic counseling to young girls and women with special needs, disabilities, caters to a geriatric female population and also addresses their needs. It is expected that the need for mental health and psychological support will substantially increase in the coming months and years. Investment in mental health programs at the national and international level, which have already suffered from years of chronic underfunding is now more important than it has ever been. The vaccine for pandemic may come and treat us for pandemic, but what about the stress and traumas deep down in school going children and others? That is why the goal of the year's World Mental Health Day campaign is increased investment in mental health. We have to invest in psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors. Healing takes time and asking for help is a courageous step. I quote Mariska Harigate. The most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen, says Elizabeth Kubler Rose. I won't take much of your time and move on to a much awaited, esteemed, eminent guests of the day. Health and hygiene go hand in hand. We have with us today, bad woman of India, Aman Preet Pasi. You can give her a resounding applaud for her work. Aman Preet is a 2010 batch IRS officer posted as Joint Commissioner Income Tax New Delhi. She has served in various important charges in the department and has also served as Election Commission of India as expenditure observer during legislative assembly elections. During COVID, she has been engaged with vulnerable sections of society with the help of our batchmates and friends and several NGOs and good Samaritans. She has been able to distribute around 12 lakh sanitary napkins span India, including the remotest and farthest districts of our country. Let's invite Amanpreet for what she has to say about COVID situation, about health, hygiene and mental health care. With this, I give a very warm welcome to all our panelists and invite Amanpreet to first share her views on health and hygiene. Welcome Amanpreet. Namaskar. A very uh, thanks to Vinita ma'am uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to be among the very esteemed panelists uh, actually, I was a bit nervous to be among such eminent personalities that they have got so much of experience. Okay, what I will uh, speak about mental health. Then, ma'am, I think the uh, congratulations to you for the helpline you have started. My best wishes, my best regards. Uh, talking about uh, uh, mental health, uh, this year, uh, the World Mental Health Day has come at a time when COVID-19 has impacted the daily life of uh, several people, including us also, and has indeed taken a toll on our mental health also. And now while the social and economic impact of the pandemic, it is increasing, it is heavy. Same, uh, the psychological consequences of this pandemic are also increasing. And when we talk about the affected and vulnerable sections of the society, during this pandemic, ma'am, when I started uh, this initiative to provide uh, sanitary napkins to the people. This actually the initiative was started by my friend Priyal who was uh, actually distributing food to the migrant laborers who was going. Then she saw the migrant women who were also the part of that uh, uh, who were going. 
उनको जब रेलवे स्टेशन पे जाके और बसेस में जाके उनको पैड्स प्रोवाइड करना शुरू किए तो उनके पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस से पता लगा कि कोविड हो चाहे ना हो बिकॉज सम ऑफ द पीपल सम ऑफ द वुमेन टोल्ड अस कि मैम हम तो ये पहली बार पकड़ रही है इतनी महंगी चीज है आपने हमें अब तो दे दिए जब ये नहीं कोविड नहीं था तो हम तो तब भी यूज नहीं करते थे एंड सरप्राइजिंगली देर वर सम पार्ट जब हमारे पास वीडियोस आई जम्मू से एज यू हैव ब्रीव दैट वी हैव वी वर एबल टू रीच द सेवनटीन इंडियन स्टेट्स ड्यूरिंग दिस पेंडेमिक तो वहां पे जैसे जम्मू का एक छोटा सा डिस्ट्रिक्ट था मैम वहां की जो हमें डिस्ट्रिक्ट uh, कोऑर्डिनेटर थी वहां जो वीडियोस भेजी तो आई एक्चुअली आई आक्स सर के वाई आर यू शोइंग द पैड्स टू देम वाई आर टचिंग लाइक दिस उसने कहा कि मैम ये हमारे डिस्ट्रिक्ट में ना देर आर सम पार्ट देर आर सम ट्राइब जिन्होंने कहा कि दीदी हमने इसकी वीडियोज देखी है हमने हमें पता है ये सैनिटरी नैपकिन होता है लेकिन हम इसको हाथ पहली बार लगा रही हैं और जब उनसे पूछा गया कि व्हाट डू यू यूज उन्होंने कहा कि हम कपड़ा यूज करती हैं और कैसे यूज करती हैं पुराना कपड़ा यूज करती हैं जो वी नो वी हैव रेड इट वी हैव रेड सो मच अबाउट इट तो मैम उनका साइकोलॉजिकल जो इफेक्ट था द कोविड मुझे लगता है कि कोविड के कारण इट हैज इंक्रीज एंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द हायर अप्स इन द सोसाइटी ऑल्सो टेक माई केस ऑल्सो नाउ मैनेजिंग multiple roles and trying to be a perfect caregiver it has indeed impacted our mental health also there are several women who are now balancing everything and in the process we are actually forgetting for our self care to har ghar ki jo mahila hoti hai aaj main bagpat mein hu actually bagpat mein jo hamari chandra tomar dadi hai unke ghar pe hi baithi hu तो इनके गांव में जब हमने डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया तो वहां की जब ये महिलाएं थी तो उन्होंने भी हमें यही बताया कि मैम बच्चों के ऑनलाइन क्लासेस शुरू हो गई हैं तो हमें जो डर था कि भी बच्चा हम कहते व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ तो चिल्ड्रन आर आल्सो द मोस्ट अफेक्टेड सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी ड्यूरिंग कोविड क्योंकि इनकी एनर्जी को चैनलाइज करना और हमारी भारतीय संस्कृति ऐसी है कि जब तक हम किसी को हग नहीं कर लेते किसी को टच नहीं कर लेते हम अपना अपनापन शायद बता ही नहीं पाते तो दीज आइसोलेशन कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक आइसोलेशन कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक कंटेनमेंट जोन एंड हम जब सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग दीज आर एक्चुअली वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द इंडियंस उनको ये कंट्रोल करके रखना तो आइसोलेशन सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग रिस्ट्रिक्शन अनसर्टेनिटी दिस हैज इंडीड क्रिएटेड इमोशनल डिस्ट्रेस नाउ विच इज बिकमिंग वाइड स्प्रेड ड्यू टू दिस कोविड नाइनटीन सिचुएशन and uh, if we talk about women the women are now juggling between many roles caregiver homemaker employee daughter daughter in law sister friend and i think many many multiple roles which you have also defined each of these roles now is governed by a certain set of attitudes beliefs thoughts perspectives and most of them are accompanied by a set of many many अनरियलिस्टिक एक्सपेक्टेशन तो अगर मम्मी घर पे है वो हमारा ध्यान भी रखेगी वो सबका खाना भी सबको टाइम पे देगी वो हमें कोविड से भी बचाएगी इफ मम्मी इज देर टू इट इज मम्मीज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी तो अब जो मम्मी का जो मेंटल लेवल है मम्मी को पीरियड्स भी आएंगे तो और बच्चों को बिकॉज वी हार्डली डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक मेन्सेज पीरियड्स मासिक धर्म आई थिंक जब कोविड शुरू हुआ तो शायद मैंने भी पहली बार अपने घर में ये डिस्कस किया पता होता था कि आई एम ऑन पीरियड्स माई हजबेंड न्यू आई एम फ्रॉम एजुकेटेड फैमिली तो माइट माई फादर और ब्रदर्स माइट ऑल्सो बी नोइंग बट वी हैव नेवर डिस्कस्ड पीरियड्स इन माई फैमिली तो ऐसी और भी महिलाएं होंगी जिन्होंने कभी डिस्कस ही नहीं किया और जब हम कोविड के टाइम पे मुझे अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली गाँव गाँव में जाके ये बात करने की the ma'am a very uh, torturous incident came to my uh, uh, came to my knowledge ko tha ki ek gujarat ka ek chhota sa uh, gaon tha aur wahan pe the school uh, jo ladkiyan thi school ki they were made to strip unko kaha gaya ki aap hame apne undergarments dikhaiye ke uh, aap kisko kisko periods aaye hain and they were made to do this kyunki isme se jo bachiyan thi wo uh, hostel ki kitchen mein chali gayi thi and according to the hostel warden Uh, they have not adhered to the social norms or uh, the social rules which they were supposed to follow to ab ye bachiyon ka ma'am agar mere mind se ye baat nahi ja pa rahi hai to i am just uh, 
uh, thinking about the psychological impact the mental impact which these girls might carry throughout their life बच्चियां जब जब भी याद करेंगी तो एक ट्रॉमे के टाइम टाइप से याद करेंगी एंड मे बी अगर उन तक हम ना पहुंचे तो मैम शायद वो किसी से डिस्कस ही नहीं कर पाएंगी क्यों नहीं डिस्कस कर पाएंगी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मेंस्टुरेशन इटसेल्फ इज अ टैबू एंड सोशल स्टिग्मा टू डिस्कस एंड व्हेन मेंटल हेल्थ मेंटल हेल्थ मैम हम तो मेंटल uh, वर्ड को ही हम नेगेटिव लेते हैं अगर हमने किसी को कह दिया इफ uh, वी uh, अगर हमने किसी को बोलना है तो भाई हम तो उसको आज की डेट में भी ऐसे बोलते हैं कि तू मेंटल है तो मतलब ये वर्ड इटसेल्फ इज अ स्टिग्मा तो इसको लेके लोग आगे कैसे आएंगे इसको लेके लेके डिस्कस कैसे करेंगे मैम योर हेल्पलाइन इज माय इट इज अ पाथ ब्रेकिंग स्टेप बिकॉज नाउ पीपल आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट पीपल आर टॉकिंग के डिस्कसिंग देयर मेंटल हेल्थ इज आल्सो एज इम्पोर्टेंट एज फिजिकल हेल्थ पहले तो हमें पता ही नहीं होता था इनफैक्ट uh, हमें शायद uh, महिलाओं को ग्रूम ही ऐसे किया जाता है कि भाई मम्मी भी तो काम करती थी हमारे जो इनफैक्ट सीनियर्स भी होते हैं तो सीनियर्स भी कई बार मजाक में बोल देती हैं कि अगर ऑफिस लेट पहुंचो तो हमने भी तो बच्चे पाले हैं उसमें तुम क्या नया कर रहे हो तो हम भी तो मतलब ये सारी चीजें हमने भी तो की हैं तुम कौन सा स्पेशल ट्रीटमेंट वाई स्पेशल ट्रीटमेंट शुड बी गिवन टू देम तो दिस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वेन वी आर वी कंसिडर आर सेल्व टू बी एम्पावर्ड वुमेन and ma'am now when we uh, talk about the lower strata of our society the underprivileged section of our society ma'am wo jab pads bhi lene jati hain wo pehle to unko ye 7 din ye tension rehti hai ki mujhe periods aane wale hain phir tension rehti hai mujhe periods aa gaye mere daag na lag jaye kisi ko pata na lag jaye jo main kapda sukha rahi hu kisi ko dikhai na de jaye ye kapda aur phir 7 din aage 7 din aise guzar jate hain ki pata nahi mujhe periods theek aaye ke nahi aaye to मतलब दिस कॉन्स्टेंटली पूरा मंथ हमारा हमें पता भी नहीं लगता कब ये हमारा मेंटल स्टेटस कब हमारी एंगजाइटी कब हमारा ये पैनिक हमारा लाइफस्टाइल बन जाता है हमारे में से बहुत सी महिलाओं को मैम पता भी नहीं होगा कि वी आर अंडर डिप्रेशन हमें पता ही नहीं होता कि हमें पैनिक अटैक आ रहे हैं हमें पसीना आता है हम कहते हैं कि नॉर्मल होगा पानी पी लो रेस्ट कर लो अपने आप ये ठीक हो जाएगा तो इट्स दिस टाइम और कोविड के टाइम पे वेन हमारे पास ये सोशल मीडिया हैज डन वंडरफुल थिंग मुझे लग रहा है कि पहले हमने सोशल मीडिया का कभी इतना इस्तेमाल नहीं किया दिस वेबिनार्स दे आर एक्चुअली अ पाथ ब्रेकिंग स्टेप के हम ज्यादा लोगों के पास पहुंच सकते हैं और उनको ये बता सकते हैं कि यस मेंटल हेल्थ इज एज इम्पोर्टेंट एज आर फिजिकल हेल्थ एंड जो ये हमारे सोशल स्टिग्माज हैं वेदर दे आर रिलेटेड टू मैंस्ट्रेशन वेदर दे आर रिलेटेड टू मेंटल हेल्थ दे नीड टू बी डिस्कस्ड जैसे मैं हर बार कहती हूँ कि बात करने से ही बात बनती है तो अगर हम बात करेंगे तभी लोगों तक ये मैसेज स्प्रेड होगा और तभी लोगों को लाइक नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग तो देर माइट बी मैनी जिनको लगेगा कि भाई बात तो ये सही कर रहे हैं आई हैव सीन देर आर डॉक्टर्स अमंग द पैनलिस्ट एंड दे कैन बेटर टेल के इट इज अ डिजीज लाइक एनी अदर नॉर्मल डिजीज विच कैन बी क्योर्ड क्योंकि लोगों को लगता है कि इफ इट इज रिलेटेड टू आर मेंटल हेल्थ तो मतलब वो स्टिग्मा लग गया और हम शायद कभी क्योर ही नहीं हो पाएंगे तो वेन अगर हम उनको ये बता पाए उन तक रीच कर पाए कि भाई ये जो चीजें हैं जो शायद मे बी पुराने सोशल स्टिग्मा थे अब जब हम जाते हैं उनको बताते हैं कि भाई नहीं यू हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द सोशल टेबूज यू हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द सोशल स्टिग्मा और उनको अच्छा लगता है कि समबडी इज नाउ टॉकिंग टू देम के दीदी आई हैं बड़ी ऑफिसर हैं हमसे बात कर रही हैं तो आई एम जस्ट थिंकिंग आई एम अ वेरी मेनिस्क्यूल पर्सन इन देयर लाइफ या Uh, मैं उनको कैसे इम्पेक्ट कर सकती हूँ सिर्फ इतनी सी बात के मैंने उनसे बात की मैंने उस टॉपिक को छेड़ दिया उनके पास जाके जो शायद वो कितने सालों से बात करना करना चाहती थी लेकिन कर नहीं पाती थी क्योंकि ये टॉपिक तो गंदा टॉपिक है ये गंदे टॉपिक को तो किसी ने डिस्कस नहीं करना चाहिए तो नाउ आई थिंक दीज आर नॉट दैट मच गंदे टॉपिक और हमें इन पे बात करनी चाहिए हमें अपनी बात वहां तक पहुंचानी चाहिए और हमें ये समझना चाहिए कि मेंटल हेल्थ needs importance and mental health is curable thank you aman thank you so much for a very heart touching heart connecting what you've shared the sentiment with us and um, with this i would like to invite dr vishal chhabra now he's a graduate from and post graduate from manipal medical college and he has 18 years of experience in clinical practice 
and uh, he's uh, currently practicing with Fortis and he's also been associated with Bim Hans Metro Hospital and uh, other group of hospitals. Uh, he's currently also the uh, fellow of Indian Psychiatric Society and Indian Association of Biological Psychiatry, Indian Association of Social Psychiatry and Indian Association of Private Psychiatry. He's the recipient of Ravi Pandey Memorial 2006, WPA Fellowship in Child Psychiatry and Asian Federation Fellowship 2012. He has published 12 articles in various journals and two chapters in psychiatry textbook besides other editorials in Delhi Psychiatric Journal. He's currently the Vice President of Delhi Psychiatric Society. And with this, I send a very warm welcome to Dr. Vishal, and he's going to tell us how and why investment in mental health is so critical today when we stand at this pandemic era. Welcome, Dr. Vishal. Thank you so much, Vinita Bakshiji. Thank you so much, uh, Ambra Foundation, uh, for inviting me. I'm really honored to be here among the nice panel. It's very, very inspiring to hear from Amanpreet uh, what she was talking about, what she's doing with the uh, woman in lower socioeconomic strata. Fabulous work. I'm very happy to hear that. Coming to the today's, uh, so today is 10th of October. Every year, 10th of October is celebrated as World Mental Health Day for the last 22 years. We are celebrating World Mental Health Day. The theme this year in, in view of the COVID pandemic, uh, WHO said is increased investment in mental health. And the World Federation of Mental Health uh, has added to it and said greater investment and greater access. So what World Body is looking at is greater investment into mental health and greater access for mental health activities. Uh, why is that important? Why is that important? I'm sure all of you being trapped in your home, own homes for the last six, seven months would have yourself realized it's important to go out, it's important to socialize, it's important to be, you know, busy in life. And when you're just staying at home and working from home and without any outlet to go out, people are getting frustrated, angry, upset, sad, dull, all this is happening. Uh, though I can look at positive sides of the, this pandemic also, negative also, and if Vinitaji allows, we can do it later. But otherwise, if you look at the mental health issues in, in the world, it is estimated every, like around 15 to 20% of uh, people in the world is suffering from one another type of mental disorder. So it's so common. It's as common as common cold or even more common than common cold. So when I talk about uh, mental health issues, I mean things like depression, uh, anxiety disorders, which are more common than things like schizophrenia and bipolar, which people know. So schizophrenia and bipolar are much severe disorders. OCD is a severe disorder. But things like generalized anxiety disorder, panic attacks, or panic disorder, mild to moderate depression, adjustment disorder, this PTSD, alcoholism, uh, excessive smoking, drugs, dementia, um, postpartum depression, so women centered. So postpartum depression, which is mixed thinking that pregnancy ke baat dal ho gaya, lady. That is a very important uh, thing which, which gets missed. There are a lot of women issues related to menstrual, so premenstrual dysphoric disorder, PMDD as it is called. Before menses, women start getting irritable or upset, moody, which is related to the changes in the hormone of the body. So there's so many plethora of disorders which come under psychiatry, not just two, three. So hundreds of disorders are there. From food, to sleep, to sex, to behaviors, young children, uh, our age group, elderly people. So all, so multiple disorders are there. But if you look at the awareness, it's really poor. Awareness among doctors itself, I'm not talking about psychiatrists, the doctor itself is very poor because in five and a half years of medicine in MBBS, psychiatry is taught, you know how much? Two weeks. So this portion of the brain, this portion of the body is taught only for two weeks. <laughs> Everything else is taught for five and a half years, just two weeks for this. That's why stigma comes from there also. 
doctors themselves stigmatize it because they don't understand mental disorders very well. They're scared of it. They think it's a difficult thing. We can't treat it. And that's it. So many things get under, under treated, under diagnosed. So when you, if you go to any physician's OPD, if there are 100 patients, 50 of them suffering from one another type of mental disorder. If you go to any GIT, GIT OPD, any gastrointestinal OPD, 40 to 50 percent of patients sitting there with pain abdomen, acidity, and all that other stuff are also suffering from some kind of mental disorder or element of a mental issue. If you look at neurology OPD, 60 to 70 percent of patients who go to neurology OPD, now so you know neurology, they're going for epilepsy or stroke, but they also go for a lot of other things also. 60 to 70 percent can have a mental health component attached to it. Uh, so the list goes on, gyne OPD. Uh, so, so these are the major OPDs, pediatric OPD, children with a lot of problems, can have ADHD, can have school refusal, can have autism, can have... So multiple problems are seen in multiple levels. But the awareness is very less. And, and look at this. Look, look at Delhi. If I ask you, you have a cardiology issue. Uh, where can you go? So you will at least name seven to ten big hospitals where you can go in Delhi for cardiac problem. But if I ask for psychiatric issues, psychiatric problems, you will have difficulty remembering one name also, you know, unless there's somebody in the family who has a mental health issue. There's not much investment. Big hospitals like Apollo, even the Fortis where I work, Max, don't have psychiatric wards in their own hospitals. So corporate hospitals don't cover it. Till recently, insurance companies won't cover for mental health issues. So, so if you have, a men, if you have a, somebody has schizophrenic son in their family, they can't take mental health insurance for that. So it's a burden on the family itself. Uh, so, so it's uh, alcoholism. So the, the, no, nothing is covered. So now, I, now the government has put a crack the whip. And I think from last one or two years, after the Mental Health Act, new Mental Health Act, Insurance are supposed to cover. So some insurance companies have started covering mental health problems. So no big investment in corporate, no big, uh, no insurance backed up till now, till recently. Uh, poor awareness among doctors itself. Forget about the population. These are the bar barriers which has led to, you know, uh, poor access to mental health issue, mental health care, and that's why you see a lot of trauma happening around. A lot of issues happening now. If I look at media, uh, the how recently when big superstars suicide was you know played out in the media, the body was shown, the things were talked about. Suicides are not covered like this. Whether it is suicide or not suicide is such, okay, it's subjudice, but the way death is covered was in a very gruesome manner. So there are no clear, there are media guidelines, but they're not enforced. So there should be a media guidelines to ensure how a death is covered in media, how it is reported, how do you show what you don't show, because children are also watching, elders are also watching. That even creates even a lot more stigma for mental health. So it's important that government needs to enact proper laws where uh, how mental health issues are covered in media should be regulated, especially suicides. It's important government and private sector invest heavily in mental health issues because if they don't, there's a pandemic waiting for it or epidemic waiting for it to burst. It's important that we create more awareness like this program is doing among social, uh, in the media, I mean, among the general population about what are, what are the mental health issues, what are the treatments available. In fact, today itself in the morning, I, along with a group of 10 other psychiatrists, we started a new group called Psychiatrists Unite. And our simple purpose, because we are from different parts of India, is to, to create awareness, not through newspapers and TV channels, but through our own selves, through social media. Uh, so uh, these are the few things I wanted to talk about, that we need to do better investment and better access for mental health issues. Otherwise, we will not be able to make India a great country. Back to you, Vinita ji. I think. Rightful, you know, I mean, I absolutely concur that mental health remains the most neglected area, whether it comes to an individual or, you know, as you shared, even during the doctor's 
brain occupies only the two pages or two paragraphs and i think really so two, two two weeks so they train only for two weeks in mental health uh, any doctor in mbbs really so i yeah. think we can definitely do better more time is given to the nose and to the ears and to the eyes <laughs> and but not to the mind you know so that yeah so uh, thank you dr vishal and uh, i wish uh, you know our pen panelists are also insightful and full of uh, such good information but you know time is a constant constraint when we are hosting a program even then we are right. hosting the eminent speakers so with this i extend a very warm welcome to dr sangeeta trehan and uh, she also wears uh, many many hats together dr sangeeta trehan is an educational administrator a management expert and a spiritualist she has around 20 years of experience of teaching and educational program administration at indiana university usa and various management engineering institutes and universities in india advocacy for women children and young adolescents especially special need ones is closer to her heart and she has been associated with several such initiatives in the past currently she is the serving dean of satyuk darshan institute of engineering and technology faridabad and management institute affiliated to ymca faridabad uh, with this over to dr sangeeta trehan a very well warm welcome here thank you very much uh, and kudos uh, to amra foundation and vinita ji i'm really uh, honored uh, to have this opportunity to be among such illustrious and experienced and i would say uh, karma yogis who are actually uh, you know taking all these initiatives uh, for the betterment of uh, society uh, especially women and children their welfare i really congratulate vinita for starting this wonderful helpline and i give wish you all the best so yes today marks world mental health day and as uh, dr vichal chabra has uh, already given us uh, this very uh, nice uh, introduction to mental health issues uh, including uh, some lacunae in our system uh, including our med medical education and how uh, mental health Uh, is kind of uh, uh, you know put on the back burner right from the medical school so um, so so this actually stimulates a lot of thought it's very thought provoking you know so thanks dr vishal for giving us you know i mean stimulating our thought and giving us the dimensions of this problem so you see today uh, being this uh, world mental health day in fact we are uh, celebrating this ongoing uh, national mental health week as well so there are so many symposia being held so many communique resolutions being passed and published um you know uh, at various levels uh, all the way to who and world federation for mental health uh, so surely um, all of us are kind of you know uh, uh, becoming you know uh, aware of the importance of mental health and also doing some soul searching doing some deliberation on uh, uh, what kind of action is required so like dr chhabra uh, urged and actually uh, called for a kind of a movement for a greater investment in mental health um so definitely that is a big big uh, uh, requirement uh, we need to invest much more in our mental health infrastructure uh, we we all uh, uh, like to en encourage authorities to take action in this regard and uh, mental health is equally important if not more important than uh, physical health uh, so basically uh, nowadays we talk of holistic health or holistic well being of which mental well being a very important part i would say uh, so i would even go on to say that mental well being is the cornerstone of even physical well being i we have numerous examples and you know in my own interactions i have met scores of people uh, who are uh, so uh, mentally strong and uh, they are uh, healthy so to speak uh, in the true sense that they are able to get over physical ailments in a jiffy you know 
they really don't uh, kind of you know uh, fuss over uh, small physical matters they are happier they are much more capable they are much more resourceful they are and helping and uh, uh, this is beyond self care so why are they able to do that because they are mentally healthy and uh, you'd be surprised to know and in, in our day to day life we encounter uh, such people and uh, not necessarily from you know the the, the upper strata of society we, we are many a times all of us i'm sure have this experience that we get pleasantly surprised by you know uh, a roadside you know sh shopkeeper or a person who is having a shack or or a person from the other you know like a domestic helper sometimes you know they sometimes open our eyes they are happier they they are able to take things in that stride and uh, so so what is in it in them they have resilience right resilience is the word and uh, they they are they are actually keeping good health mental good health and that is how they are able to cope up with several challenges which i bet many of us would become overwhelmed with if if we live the life of a you know uh, a, a humble worker and understand where he or she is coming from and try to live that life for a day i'm sure many of us would get overwhelmed actually uh, if we come back to our country our culture is very resilient because i have been in the united states for several years uh, so this is a general observation in india we are much much more resilient as as a country as a people we take many things in our stride actually uh, we have you know a lot of capability and we have you know a lot of wisdom and actually we have a lot of resources also uh, to fall back on see i'm i'm just uh, uh, you know trying to uh, now dwell upon some internal factors so we started with discussion of external infrastructure like uh, dr vichal also dwelt upon so uh, having said that that yes we do need all that infrastructure uh in order to provide access provide services but at the same time i would like to dwell in my talk more on uh, what are the things that we can do because you see this national mental health week will pass so will the world mental health day today so if we shift our focus away from the more serious kind of mental health disorders like schizophrenia bipolar and, and some of these were named by dr vichal so if for a, for a minute we we move away from these uh, serious kind of disorders uh, there are a whole lot of you know relatively mild kind of conditions or i would say it's a spectrum actually all of us you know are sometimes anxious so we 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 know there's something called anxiety disorder but then are we not all anxious at some time do we not feel anxiety we do now how do we cope with these things and how do we improve our mental wellness that is what we need to you know uh, basically focus on because mental well wellness is basically a it's a state of well being it's it's a state of realizing our own capabilities it's it it means that we cope with the normal stresses of our life it also means that we work productively and that we work product uh, fruitfully and that also it means that we are able to make a contribution in the in the community so let us dwell in the in the next few minutes let us dwell on what can we do to make things better in our day to day lives see i i tell you that all of us all of the audience also who are actually able to participate in this uh, you know uh, today's event we are all lucky first of all let us be grateful we are lucky because we have internet connection we have smart devices we are able to you know understand english we are educated we have basic knowledge and awareness so so we are among those minuscule minority in this country who can appreciate these issues and who can do something about it so it behoves on us to do a few things to make things better so what are those things well for example we can first of all do better self care like uh, uh, mrs amar preet uh, beautifully described her uh, experience and that's very very inspiring uh, let us take inspiration from her from amra and let us do something to first of all manage ourselves in a better way pandemic has put us all through much hardship especially women and children 
and uh, like she uh, you know related her own experience of how women folk you know they have gone through you know most of the stresses in managing families work life balance and so on so self care of course is one area we need to first of all do meditation do yoga do do whatever it takes to keep ourselves in the best possible mental health mental state so that is one aspect self care then of course family care, care. again family care is something that we need to do along with self care this is all as a family unit we all do that now beyond that being educated being this minuscule minority the nation also has some you know uh, expectation from us and uh, what is that expectation that we need to reach out and try to you know empower these people from the unorganized sector uh, what we also call in management bottom of the pyramid uh there has been a very famous you know indian professor uh, management guru ck prahlad uh, maybe you have some of you have uh, have heard about him so he's written this book uh, uh, called uh, you know uh, fortune uh, at the bottom of the pyramid so where he tells us you know how to how this bottom of the pyramid you know what are their you know uh, basically resilience their capabilities and actually they have lot of not in them and we from the educated society actually they don't need our sympathy we basically need to partner with them and we can actually do economic you know interaction with them we can also empower them we can do a partnership with them uh, there are also very nice you know um, uh, uh, josh talks um, by captain uh, raman uh, if some of you are aware so he also dwells on this theme of how we can partner with people from the unorganized sector and how we can actually learn some things from them whether it is good mental health whether it is business acumen whether it is resilience so let us partner with this other india and let us reach out to them let us make some time for them and try to help them out in this pandemic so we have lot of inspiration we have a lot of good work several initiatives being taken by ambra and i congratulate them one more time and uh, i'm reminded of uh, what john f kennedy said once and then dr apj abdul kalam also said it uh, in the context of uh, indians and he said that ask what we can do for india and do what has to be done to make india what america and other western countries are today so to this i would like to add like why why just america because see america it, i mean you know it, 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 especially when we come to mental health and you know these medical issues america has issues has lots of issues they may have a lot of infrastructure uh, but of course there are a lot of pros and cons uh, this is not the time to dwell into those aspects but i would say that let us try to make india what finland what denmark what switzerland what you know these uh, norway sweden netherlands these are the countries which are which figure high in the happiness report you must have uh, read somewhere world happiness report is there so these countries are happy countries so called happy countries so so happy of course means healthy right mentally healthy of course mm -hmm. and then close at home we have bhutan right which is known as the kingdom of happiness so let us all strive to do our bit a small task you know in our own neighborhood in our own small circle of influence let us pick one person that may be a domestic worker that may be somebody who uh, you know irons clothes for us in our community that may be somebody who is doing some kind of you know uh, in some, running some kind of eat the in our neighborhood you know so anybody of humble background let us understand them let us reach out let us partner with them let us you know empower them and also probably learn from them how to be happy how to be you know resilient those are my parting words with you and thanks again uh, amra and thanks again vinita thank you so much dr sangeeta uh, you know from each speaker i am going to take several takeaways and uh, i uh, really uh, appreciate that you know what you said that what is that line what is that thin boundary because you know we live with so much of stress day in and day out what is that line where we understand or where we are able to comprehend yes this is the time when i need counseling this is the time when my meditation and my self care is not helping me 
but I have to walk a step ahead and seek some professional help. That is that is the line sometimes, you know, uh, most of us, it's a very nebulous line, which most of us fail to understand. And uh, also the fact that, uh, you know, as you rightly said, that uh, United States of America or some other uh, European um, countries or American countries, they maybe are very high on the level of achievement of material index, they are very, very high. But when it comes to happiness quotient, we just have to look very close by Bhutan. And uh, spiritualism, spirituality is the strength which keeps countries like us higher on the happiness index than many other countries who are materially much more prosperous. And then when it comes to mental health care and when it comes to self-care and uh, we talk about self-care and family care, I think family care has to be a shared responsibility of Men, in the, men at home and women at home. And then I think that shared responsibility makes a task much more happier for everybody, every inhabitant of that family, of that unit, of that household. And with Absolutely. The, yes, I move on to welcome Mr. Gaurav Bhattara, who's the group CEO of AB Tutorials and AB Education Research and Development. And uh, Gaurav has always been promoting a holistic view of education. He's a, a spiritualist himself and uh, deeply into meditation and he's a lawyer by profession. And uh, he's been, um, he's made it into the Forbes 220, Forbes India 220, Pride of Bharat 220, Delhi Icon Awards 2018. And uh, even alongside, uh, he does a lot of, uh, social initiatives through his uh, wife's foundation is very actively uh, into uh, many philanthropic activities. He's an educator, philosopher, spiritualist, and uh, trying to empower students. And uh, he has so far reached out to 4,000 students and uh, is very passionate about his uh, Buddhism and a lot of other um, uh, Oriental philosophies. And with these words, I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Gaurav Bhattara. Welcome to uh, World Mental Health Care Day, Gaurav. Welcome here. Thank you, Vinita. I hope you can hear me clearly. Absolutely, yes. Great, great. So thank you for a wonderful introduction. So, <clears throat> you know, to a person who's perceptive, all the introduction that you gave basically tantamounts to one thing, somebody who's, uh, who's not able to figure out what to do. So he kept doing and doing and doing and doing. So uh, since you mentioned about uh, the correlation between the, the happiness index and the various other things, so I'll just share with you something that I was just hearing you and Dr. Threyan speak. So uh, interestingly, uh, you know, the happiness index, on the happiness index, uh, the countries that are in the top five are also countries that are in the top five as per the rule of law index. So what that effectively means is that countries where the rule of law is very effective are the countries in which people are happiest. So this is not something that I've created. This is a UN and a UNDP report in which uh, the direct comparison is between countries who are higher on the rule of law index are also amongst the top five in the happiness index. So, so something very interesting that Dr. Trehan was talking about is, is you know, uh, the power of one, as, as I call it whenever I get the opportunity to address platforms. The power of one is very important in which if you focus on the one person that is ahead of you or in front of you, it works as some kind of a chain reaction. So, you know, I'll share with you something very interesting about a story that I often quote whenever I get invited. It's about this, uh, it's a starfish story in which, you know, there are these thousands of starfishes that have been washed ashore. And one person sees the starfishes that are washed ashore and obviously if by the morning, if they're not put back in the water, they'll die. 
So, so this guy goes and he suddenly rushes there and he starts throwing all the uh, starfishes back to the water. So one other person who's walking, you know, sees this guy throwing all the starfishes in the water. He asks, he said, you fool, do you think you'll be able to uh, save all these thousand of them? So the person who's throwing the starfish in the water tells this guy, like, tell this to the one I just threw in the water. So just to be able to make difference to one life is in itself a huge accomplishment because that one life interacts with thousands of lives in the process or in the journey of the life and is able to create value with whichever or whoever we interact with. However, one point where I, I disagree with, uh, with whatever I've heard is that, that, that we've seen the Western countries uh, developed and advanced. And, and, and I, I, believe, I, believe, uh, I believe in a certain concept, uh, which is very fundamental to the Buddhist philosophy that I hold dear to and I practice, which is that living true to yourself. Every person, every person has to be true to themselves. If a rose tries to emulate a lotus, it will be a disaster. And if a lotus tries to emulate a rose, it will again be a disaster. Why? Because they're two different entities. A lotus is able to sustain itself in the muddy waters, whereas a rose will die. So for us, in order to be successful as a country and as people, I mean, we are, I'm not saying that we're not successful, but to be more successful in the true sense, we must be true to ourselves as a nation. And we have to be true to ourselves as people. Now in India, if you will, uh, if you will appreciate, India has the largest youth population in the world. About 65% of India's population is under the age of 35. That's roughly about 850 million people. This is where lies the key to developing the human resource of this country. But, but I probably, you're not aware, Vinita, I'm also a UN SDG ambassador for India, for SDG 4. And I made roadmap of, uh, during Corona, I, was, I had the good fortune of connecting 152 backward districts of the country in which over, uh, over 20 crore people were reached out to. So, and I, and I work with youngsters at a certain level. So it's very important if we're talking about the mental health of this country and the people, that we understand first the demographics of what we've got on our hands. Because if a doctor tries to give a medicine without diagnosing the illness properly, it can be a disaster. So the first thing that we have to figure out and what we have to see is what do we have on our hands? We've got a country that is over 10,000 years old in terms of civilization. However, is is currently the second largest FTI or the largest FTI in the world. So we've got a country that has over 850 million youngsters. We've got a country in which the constitution of this country is so closely linked to its cultural roots that the founding fathers of the Indian constitution have placed a symbol of India's culture on each page of the constitution document. I mean, they were not fools, right? I mean, were the founding fathers of the Indian constitution fools? They were all qualified lawyers and barristers from UK back then. So when there's fundamental duties on the page of the fundamental duties in the Indian constitution, you will find the, for the photo of Ram. And similarly, you will find Buddha. Similarly, you will find Guru Gobind Singh. Similarly, you will find XYZ. So it's very important for us not to try and emulate any other country, but to understand who we are as a country and then develop to the highest potential. So coming back to what, what, why we are here today, uh, you were talking about mental health. 
you see health is first of all a very subjective term that is the first thing to understand it is not an objective term if you get if you if you not been well for 15 days if you not been able to walk for 15 days and then you are able to walk for half a kilometer you can say that you are experiencing good health however somebody who's been used to running for 10 kilometers is able to walk just half a kilometer what happens to that person he is experiencing bad so the first thing to understand is that the, the term health is a subjective process it is not an objective process and health can be a simplistic uh, concept and health can be a complicated concept it's up to you whether you want to simplify the process of what is known as health or you want to complicate it you will not believe that there is a japanese um, uh, reformer in education is called dr josai tota who gave a very simplistic definition of uh, good health he says as long as you are able to eat reasonably and you are able to sleep sufficiently think that you are experiencing good health so while the while while the medical sciences is is advancing and we all appreciate the advancements of the medical profession however it is very important to understand that good health starts from within us and does not start from outside us so if you feel that you can get good health when i mean health i'm referring to mental health if you think that you can get good health by running from pillar to post so things like that it does not work like that you get good health from starting from within now the un uh, i think it's the unesco charter which says that wars begin in the minds of men so that is where peace must begin to this is the united nations giving cognizance to the importance of mind saying the wars begin in the minds of men so that is where peace must be also if you will see a 12th or a 13th century 12th century buddhist you know founder of a certain mahayana school of buddhism says that there are no two lands pure and impure the difference lies solely in the mind one person who has a pure mind is able to see the goodness throughout the land and one person who has an impure mind is able to see only the bad and the evil throughout the land so therefore to achieve mental health one of the first things that we have to do is understand what is health and health simply can mean that as long as you are able to eat to your heart's content and you are able to sleep to your heart's content think that you are experiencing good health on a very simple simplistic thought process and interface then we come to mind so the mental all all often emanates from the mind what is the first step to overcome the the it is you know in the in the philosophy whether it's oriental whether it's whether it's ancient hindu philosophy mind has been described as a monkey you have to learn to control the monkey you have to learn to train the monkey on an average day we have more than 804000 thoughts in our mind and if you start following each and every thought you got a problem on your hands you have to learn the power of discernment that means which thought and idea to let go and which thought and idea to take action on this becomes the first starting point of filtering the over information or overload of information that is occurring within you is to decide which thought to let go and which thought not to now now in terms of uh, i i often talk about spiritual processes though i i take i keep myself abreast of the latest medical developments uh, that a human being in spiritual definitions is said to be an aggregate of five components 
this is different from the part skanda or the part tattva that you are that you are referring to the five components are called form perception conception volition and consciousness perception the form perception conception volition consciousness when there is disharmony form represents the physical form and the other four represent the mind or the spiritual process when the other four that is perception conception volition consciousness when these four are not in harmony you are said to suffer from maybe anxiety maybe depression or maybe what have you and one of the first things to do when people come using spiritual solutions to mental problems is that you attempt to balance the flow of information that happens through conception volition so perception conception volition consciousness what is this for exactly i've got a minute i think more sandeep i saw your text so i'll try and wrap it up in a minute so people have said that when i start talking they often uh, get rid of the counters that's an old uh, this thing so vinita didn't know that about me so she invited me you know so now perception conception volition consciousness means what that that when you take in outside information that outside information forms a mental image that mental image causes you to make a decision that decision makes you take an action and that action leaves a certain imprint in your consciousness this is the whole process of perception conception volition and consciousness and when you are able to take let's say you are think no looking at a dog so your five senses you take in that this is a dog like the information goes inside your mind your mind paints the image of a dog using the right judgment discernment you realize that dog can be a dangerous animal you stay away and when you stay away that forms a certain impression in your mind saying that whenever there's a dog stay away when the body which is a form and the perception conception volition consciousness are in harmony a person is said to be experiencing harmony and good health in every which way now people talk about emotional health mental health what is emotions i mean it's very important to understand what we have got before you start trying to solve it emotions is a combination of intellect and spirituality those people who are strong intellectually those people who are strong spiritually will be emotionally strong people so emotions are made up of two components one is called the intellect and the other is called the so these are the two things which contribute to a strong emotional person and when you are a strong emotional person you will not have mental issues so you will not suffer from any uh, so called in harmony or imbalance of, of, of body and mind so wrapping it up that it's very important for each one of us to be in a state of balance between our body and our mind and when we are in balance between a body and a mind we will experience what we know as happiness in the uh, sense that you understand and when you are experiencing happiness in the sense that you understand you will never experience any form of disturbance within your mental faculty so perhaps uh, this is where i will stop now perhaps if there's another platform and there's more time i will elaborate more on how this actual process happens and how we can become much more happier and more accomplished people and what the purpose of life is as human beings it, i will just uh, if if i have a minute uh, sandeep uh, one minute i could just share one last thing and then i could go the basic purpose of human life is to be happy 
who complicates it? We complicate it by not believing that that is the case. Why do you think, does anybody want to be unhappy? No, we want to be happy all the time. But what happens is your definition of happiness keeps changing at different stages and phases of your life. At the age of 10, you get happy using a candy. You try and give a candy to a 20-year-old, he'll throw it away. A 20-year-old may want something else to be happy. At 25, you some, become something else. At 30, you become something else. So while you want to be happy during, and that never changes, but the definition of happiness keeps changing. So one of the shortest ways to overcome this so-called mental, uh, whatever as, as people call it, is just to be able to define what makes you happy at different stages and ages and try and do actions towards whatever makes you happy. So I want to thank all of you for being patient, uh, all the panelists, and also all the attendees. And of course, I always say that Finika Ji, you're doing a great job. And it's always wonderful to come here and to be able to have the good fortune to address the platforms and to hear the wisdom of so many people that have been here today. Thank so you. thank you so much and I wish the best and, to all uh, of you. I'm sure that we will uh, in the near future have an individual session with uh, each of our panelists, you know, whom we wanted to hear more and the time was short. Um, Again, you know, several takeaways from uh, everybody, but since time we are running short and uh, I have to introduce our very special uh, guest on board today. That is uh, uh, Mr. Sandeep Bhargava. He is the managing partner at Karo Sambhav and uh, he's an experience with the demonstrated history of working in corporate affairs, public policy, domain in telecommunications industry, innovation, management, government and mobile communications, internet, and is very strong in advocacy, poli policy, external diplomatic relations, countrywide, states, overseas. And he's been a member of the Executive Council of PECOSA, former chairman, Telecom Committee for European Union, and National Advisory Board member, Sarthak, Vice President, National Avlimics Association of India. And he's also member of She Speaks Advisory Board. So with these uh, words, I extend a very warm welcome to Sandeep for uh, taking up, you know, chosen questions uh, to the, which will be addressed to our panelists today and also for extending a thank you note to conclude the today's meeting. And thank you very much everybody for being here, all our uh, viewers and all our esteemed panelists. And with this over to Sandeep Hargava. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you, Vinita. Uh though not so much of intro was required, but thank you very much for uh, giving us the introduction. So thank you all the panelists, uh, including Dr. Vishal, Amanpreet ji, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, and finally Gaurav Bhattara ji. I think excellent uh, uh, thoughts from each one of you, and each one has given a good takeaway in terms of what one should do it. So my, my, my responsibility here for the session is to pick up the questions and get the answers. So while you were uh, uh, giving some thoughts across, there were questions already on the chat box and there was a need for the sanitary napkins in Nagore in Rajasthan, which was very well responded by Aman Priji that they can connect with them and then the, the, the distribution can take place. So, so which is also a great uh, outcome of this that online you can connect across and then uh, see the distribution happens very soon. So in terms of the questions, we have a question from uh, Dr. Manju Seth. She's an IFS retired, uh, diplomat. Uh, her question is, what can be done to ensure that people in rural and urban areas, including doctors, focus on and understand mental health issues without stigmatization? She has a suggestion also uh, at the same time, every individual needs to be made aware of mental health issues at school level. And of course, in medical education, as psychosomatic illnesses are on the increase. And at the last, she mentions that both yoga and meditation need to be promoted at the grassroots level across the world. So so I think one of the doctors should pick up. So maybe Dr. Vishal, uh, yeah. you can address so, this. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of positive things which are happening recently. One with the International Yoga Day, which has been launched by Modi ji. Uh, I think that has helped uh, propel, make Modi yoga more popular. 
yoga also was stigmatized how mental health was yoga kon karega you know it was not so cool to do yoga gym was cool but not yoga now yoga has become cool in last 3 4 years it's precisely because of the marketing done for the yoga so that has happened there is a new uh, the new national medical council which has been formed now instead of mci they're looking at improving the syllabus on mbbs and uh, revising it and adding more psychiatry to it so that is going to definitely happen so that will be a positive step in the right direction also a lot of awareness is happening because people are suffering more mental illness and just wanted to add this as countries progress <clears throat> uh, materially mental health issues go up because jab pet bhar jata hai na to dimag jab chalna shuru hota hai so you only worried about the uh, you know filling your stomach the once your stomach is full then you are, all of the point starts coming you know so other issues starts coming in and so that is what is happening now and you see teenagers having problems young young boy, boys and girls in in preschool sorry in uh, primary school having problem elders having problems so mental health issues are increasing people are suffering so there's a lot of talk happening and because of the talk happening there's a lot of noise which is coming up is helping also one more important point mental health care act which was enacted 3 years back it makes compulsory for all state governments that is different they don't implement to ab jo jo ma'am puch rahi thi jinka uh, question tha to uh, to to put a um, psychiatrist at district level and even go up to phc also and start providing care it has lot of good ideas about homeless people who are wandering the street to give uh, to, to provide shelter for them also for elderly dementia patients who have no care right now facility to make uh, shelters for that so hopefully that will also happen in coming uh, years and decades so this is all positive signs thank you thank you dr vishal the next question is from uh, apolina and her question is while bhutan is one of the top countries uh, in terms of the happiness index but uh, she mentions that there is a growing concern over the high number of suicides taking place in the country what steps should be taken in this regard to prevent such cases and i can also echo about uh, finland because finland also has a very uh, high on the happiness index almost number 1 i think the number 1 but there also the suicide cases are pretty high like i have a data of 2015 it is 15.9 per 100000 cases so so this is one question that also also, ca- also kerala kerala the li- god's own country and very high literacy also has very high suicide rates Yeah, uh, so in India. Would you like to answer uh-huh. this, Doctor Vishal, or anybody yeah. else would like to take this up? So one of the reasons I, I can go ahead and then maybe Doctor Sangeeta can or anybody else can add in if they want to. I think what is the what is important to understand is that uh, as as we become more progressive, uh, I think somewhere this it's like how uh, our last speaker was saying. It's all in the head. how you perceiving things so i think when you become much more uh, competitive much more into the rat race that kind of pressure start taking in much more you know so depending on what environment you living in what kind of pressure you facing i think that causes people to start feeling more depressed and more upset and leading to uh, having you know if and depression is not controlled having more suicidal ideation also please remember as people become more educated they try to think we can control everything so this is a flip side to it so they said ki we will not go to the doctor because i am so smart i have done a doctorate or i am a phd or i am an mphil i will manage on mon because i am a i am a brainy guy it's a mind thing na no? i'll manage but things are so biological in a way at times which you can't control it no matter how much you want you can't control negative thoughts sometimes because if the disease process is set in no amount of meditation can help i do meditation myself i'm just telling you but it's not that i'm not but but when the disease process has come in then you need an intervention and a lot of times very educated people or very smart people start thinking that we can manage our own mind to mind ka khel hai na main to kar hi sakta that's the problem i think uh, thank you dr vishal one last question uh, from uh, this is from neeta uh, the question is uh, mental health issues are indeed very common i hope some very basic steps can be suggested to divert one's mind and take it towards positivity i feel one should find always ways to distract one's mind and inculcate inculcate a feeling of positivity so basically her question is that there is a lot of diversion which is possible and diversion can really help uh, work on the people's mind or the person's mind and she also mentions that the book ikigai has very good suggestion it should really be used as some kind of a diversion diversionary tactic so 
So I think there are a lot of suggestions and I'm sure Dr. Trehan, uh, Sangeeta Trehan can uh, concur with this and say that if there is a diversion possible or, or, or some kind of other activity you put on like maybe music or go or anything else, which can really take your mind off from the issues with your uh, dealing with. But as Dr. Vishal said that if it comes into the body, any kind of diversion or meditation may not help. So, so something Dr. Sangeeta for you to answer now. Yeah, sure, uh, Mr. Bhargava. And uh, thanks, Neeta, for uh, bringing up, you know, this very practical uh, issue. Because, see, like I said, you know, uh, mental health, you know, uh, all of us are responsible for that. And there's a lot, a lot we can do. So it is just uh, a matter of coping. So as you know, all of us uh, go through these kind of times. And what can we do to cope with them? Some very commonsensical things, like you rightly said, you know, uh, distraction, you know, basically taking our mind of that uh, thing that causing us, you know, anxiety, you know, and keeping ourselves, you know, occupied with the, you know, sense of positivity, sense of, you know, purpose. So make anything purposeful in your life. It could be, you know, uh, something very, very simple. It could be some kind of creative work. It could be some music. It could be some artwork. It could be some kind of social work, maybe something in your neighborhood, you know, maybe uh, uh, Teach India campaign, you know, giving out time for that or, you know, doing some kind of spiritual pursuit. Uh, so this is very, very important for us. Each of us needs that in order to maintain our own positivity. Otherwise, you know, that there is a, a lot of, you know, spiral, you know, negative spiral of for negativity. And as everybody knows, there's an old saying that empty mind is a devil's workshop. So uh, the way the mind works, we really need to kind of prick it. We need to, uh, you know, uh, engage ourselves with the positive action, which is a sure shot way to keep our own mental health in the best possible condition. Um, in psychology, you know, um, as a positive psychologist, you know, I, I really want to emphasize this point because psychology um, and psychiatry, of course, you know, we, we've dealt with, you know, a lot of these, a lot of disorders. And in fact, psychologists were actually themselves, uh, you know, kind of uh, mindful of their own approaches. And that's how there was this movement of positive psychology, which took ground. Which basically means that instead of, you know, uh, talking about the disorders and the, you know, that treatment, let us change our approach. All of us, you know, the positive psychology means looking at how we can make things better by doing small incremental changes in our own lifestyle, you know, by doing yoga, by doing meditation, and also some of the things that I just talked about, coping with our problems in a better way by engaging in some positive action. So yes, uh, the book Ikigai that you mentioned, it's a great book. And there's so much content, uh, uh, of course, uh, on the YouTube uh, and so many other books that we can all get inspiration from. So thank, thank you much. Can I add a word to what ma'am said? And she yes. said very right. Sure, sure. When we look at uh, yoga and meditation, we should look at it as planting a seed. A lot of times people pick yoga and meditation when disasters already happen. It's like you want to eat the food and now you're asking, can I, can I, can I plant the crop? So that's how it should work. So people what started going to yoga when doctor says your diabetes has come up. So okay, let me go yoga for one month and diabetes will get corrected. So that is the magical thing which doesn't happen. That's it's important that people should start uh, adopting a healthy lifestyle. Which this book Ikigai is beautifully done. They have taken this Japanese uh, culture and tried to display in that book. It's very nice. So we have very good culture of our own. So we should use meditation, yoga in our daily lives. Incorporate it. And then definitely help us. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Vishal. And uh, I would take this opportunity to uh, end the session for today. Uh, it's been very uh, lively session, very informative, and a lot of actions can emerge out of those, which definitely we will put it across forward and also seek help of the people who have been there. So thank you, Dr. Vishal, for being with us. Thank you, Aman Priji, for being with us and sharing your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sangeeta, and thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Gaurav Bhattara, for your views and your ex experience in this whole field has been very stupendous, and you have been into a variety of things. So I'm sure we will definitely approach you soon for in a, any other session which you would like to hold up. And sorry for interrupting for a minute, uh, giving you in the terms of the time, but I have to take care of the overall time. So, so thanks, everybody. Thank you to the audience as well, who was quietly listening to it and put across some good questions. So we
got the responses also very well. And thank you all from uh, Amra Foundation. And uh, I would just like to highlight. If you are not able to take some questions, we can ask them to panelists later and then can email or WhatsApp the answers to our uh, guests, you know, who have questions and we were not able to take them today. Sure. Thank and you. One, one more request since uh, it is uh, Dr. Vishal is here, Dr. Sangeeta is here, Amanpreet ji, and Gaurav as well, that you can promote the She Speaks helpline, Sashakta, which has been there since August 15, we inaugurated. Uh, to the people who would like to seek help on mental health purposes. So in some form, fashion or manner, we have creatives uh, available on social media as well as on our website and would like you to really uh, put it across to the people who need it. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everybody. And look forward to a further interaction and a, a next opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.